In the last video, we built a view for displaying our first serialized blog post from the server. So we can visit that serialized data. We can get that serialized data by going to API blog and then adding the blog slug and we can get that information. So if we take a look at the view, it just queries the blog post and then uses the blog post serializer to output that data. And we can get the same data using Postman. So if I visit that exact same URL using Postman, press send, I get the title, the body, the image, and the date updated, which are all the fields that are serialized. So now in this video, we're gonna work on the rest of the requests. So we're gonna work on being able to update a blog post from the REST API, uh, being able to delete a blog post and being able to create a blog post. So we're going to do a put, delete, and post request because now we we already have get. We need put, delete, and post requests. All right, so let's uh, let's start building it. So it's going to be a a lot of this is going to be similar. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this, change this to a put request, and of course we need to change the the view name. This is going to be API update blog view. Since we are updating the blog, we still need to get that blog post. So same kind of checking section right here. And now down here is where we want to make our changes. So if it is a put request, I need to pass the blog post. And I also want to pass request.data to the serializer. Uh, next, coming down, the next step is I'm going to create a data variable. Think of this as kind of like similar to the context variable that we did in all the views. So notice I always initialize this context variable and then we return that to the view. Well in here I'm going to create a data variable and then depending on if this update was successful or if it fails we are going to up give we're going to add some data to this data variable and return that as the response. So there's our data variable. Now if the serialized if the serializer dot is valid. So I'm checking to see if all of the data is in the form, basically. You can think of this very similar to a Django form. So if you go to the website and I was to click on one of these blog posts, I have the option, this is kind of a big one, let's click on a smaller one. I have the option to update this blog post and then it uses a form to update it. This is kind of the regular functionality. So with serializers and with the Django REST framework, it's very similar to forms. So if you go back to our code and I was to go to like a regular view, go to the edit blog view, for example, we use a form and then we check to see if the form is valid and then we update it if the form is valid. So it's very similar with the Django REST framework, except we use a serializer. So we get the serializer, we pass the data, we check to see if the serializer is valid. If it is valid, then we save the changes that were made. Yeah, I really think the best way to think of this is kind of very similar to a form. A serializer, when regarding to updating something, is very much the same as a form. And you'll see uh, similar things when we look at the post request also. So if the serializer is valid, we want to save it. And now I'm going to add a response to the server to uh, tell the user if the update was successful. So I'll write success. I'm adding just like a success parameter to that data variable and I'll say update successful or something. doesn't really matter. Just something to tell the user that it went correctly. And then I want to return a response and just set data equal to data, which is this variable right here. Uh, so if it's if it wasn't valid, though, we have a totally different scenario. So here, if in that case, I want to do serializer dot errors. So I'm passing the errors from the serializer and I want to do status equals status HTTP uh, we're going to do a 400 not found so, or 400 bad request 400 bad request and I'm going to save that so if it's successful we're returning uh, just in case you're wondering what that's going to look like it will look like I'll pull up a notepad file here and just show you so the data will look like this it'll be like a JSON object data It'll be uh, six, oops, success and uh, update successful or whatever I said there. That's what uh, that's what's going to get returned right here as this this uh, data object. All right, so there's our uh, API update blog view. The next one is going to be for deleting blog posts. So once again, I'm going to copy this because a lot of it is similar. Copying that, I'm going to change this to a delete request and change the name to API delete blog view. I want to check to see, I want to get that blog post again. So the same kind of stuff here. And then here's where it gets different. So if request.method equals delete, 
and here's where it's going to get different. So I want to do operation equals blog post dot delete. And then if that operation is successful, I want to let the user know. If it failed, I also want to let the user know. So data equals the empty context or the empty, empty um, variable. Then if operation, so if operation is successful, I want to do data. I can just do success again equals delete successful. And then otherwise, I want to return some kind of an error. So if that's successful, I want to return, or actually I can just return, uh, yeah, I mean, I should return some kind of an error. So return, actually I can just do one line. So I'll do here data equals data, data equals data. And if it's successful to do that, otherwise I'm gonna do data failure and just say delete failed. And then that will return to, to the uh, API. So the last view is gonna be for creating blog posts. And this one's a little trickier. And the reason it's a little trickier is because it requires an author to be authenticated to create that blog post. Because obviously you, you shouldn't be able to create a blog post unless you're authenticated with the website. And then, then, it, then comes the question of what does it mean to be authenticated with a REST API? Because if you're using something like a mobile application, how um, you know you could pretend that the mobile app is Postman. How would I authenticate with Postman? I can't. I don't have access to like the session on the website. I don't have access to anything. So what does it mean to be authenticated? In this course, we're going to be using something called token authentication. So basically, what we'll have is we'll have tokens, big long strings of numbers and letters that. Um, that are unique for each user. And then once you have that token, which you can only get from your username and password, then you can send it as a header to the request. I mean, I'll just give you kind of a demonstration right now, um, just so you can see what's gonna be coming up for later. I'm just looking for one of the requests. So here's a, re a request. I'll change this to HTTPS openapi.xyz, and it's accessing the uh, the web, the open source API that I have here on this website already up. So uh, if we take a look at the header, I have an authorization and it says token and then there's the author authorization token. I click send uh, and it says an invalid token, but that's because this token is invalid. One of these other requests probably have a valid one, but um, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. What's, uh, what's important is the just showing you how we're gonna be doing it. So basically you would get this authentication token and then you attach it as a header to the request. You press send and it would give you the data if it was a valid token. If it's not a valid token, then it gives you this response. It says invalid token. So that's what, it, what it's gonna mean to be authenticated on our server. So now I lost my train of thought. We were talking about creating blog posts, okay. So, but for right now, we obviously can't authenticate users because we don't have that functionality added yet. So we are just gonna allow you know anybody to be able to create blog posts. But we still need to get that, that user object, which is what you'll see in the example here. So I'm copying the, copying the delete, the delete um, request or the delete view. And I'm, I'm changing this to post. This is gonna be API create blog view. I don't need the slug passed through the response. I don't need to get the blog post like this. And I'm just gonna delete all this actually. We're just gonna, we're just gonna start fresh. So first we need to get the account. So I need to go, and remember, we're going to hard code this in for now, but later and later in the course, we'll be doing request.user to get the authenticated user through the token. But for now, we can't do that because we don't have that set up yet. So we're going to do um, account.objects.get. And I'm just going to get one of the user who has the primary key equal to one just to get you know any user so that we can actually move forward. So and now I'm on to create a blog. Oh, this is so this is kind of the next tricky part because how do you pass the user object to the blog post that's going to be created because if you look at the serializer here it has nothing it has no like author field there's no way to pass the author to the blog post so what you have to do is you have to get the account for the author because it's a required field if we look here we go to author it has a foreign key relationship this is a required field if you don't have the author you won't be able to create the blog post so i want to create a blog post i'm going to go blog post uh, author equals account because I've just queried that. Uh, now I want to do if request.method equals post. I don't think you need to do this, but I always do. Now I want to create the serializer. So blog post, blog post serializer. 
I'm going to pass the blog post and pass data equals request dot data. So this is kind of the most important part. I'm passing the blog post that already has an author attached to it to the serializer. So that's where it's getting the author from. If I didn't do that, I wouldn't be able to create the blog post again because the author is a required field. So now let's go and uh, write the rest of this. So the rest of it's going to be pretty straightforward. We have our data, our data. Uh, object again, then if the serializer dot is valid, so if our form is valid, kind of in other words, then I want to do serializer dot save, and I want to return a successful response with the serialized data. So serializer dot serializer dot data, and then status equals uh, status dot HTTP 201, which is a successful, uh, wait, yeah, 201 is created. So 201 created. Uh, 200 is also a successful response. You could use that one. Uh, otherwise, I want to return response serializer dot errors and do status equals status dot HTTP 400 bad request. And we don't actually even use this data, so I'm going to get rid of that. So just using the serialized data if it's able to be created or returning errors if something goes wrong. So that's our four views for the blog. And of course, there's gonna be more as we move on with this course, there's still a lot to do. Like I said, we gotta do the authentication. We also need a way to list the blog posts. But here's the first four. We have a get request, a put request, a delete request, and a post request. Now I want to add these to the URLs. So just like we did before, I'm gonna I'm gonna copy the name here, API update blog view. Gonna go into the URLs inside of the API folder in blog. And I'm going to grab all of these views. So I'm going to add a bracket here because I'm going to add a whole bunch of blogs. There's the first one or a whole bunch of views, I mean. There's the second one for the update. The next one is for deleting. So API delete blog. Let's paste that in. And then the last one is for creating the blog. So paste that in. And now I'm going to copy this a bunch of times and we can add the URLs. So we have the next one's going to be the update. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to do slug slash update and remembering to append that update there. Uh, you don't need that if you're using postman like technically you don't but um, I think the safest thing to do is just to add it. I'm going to give this a name of, of update. The delete one is going to be here. This is going to be slash delete and we'll change the name to delete. And then we have create and we don't need a slug for creating. So just do create slash and do create. And then this will be create pressing control S to save that. And uh, now let's let's test it out. So let's go into postman and I'm going to I'm going to create one first of all. So I'm going to go over to our request and let's uh, change this URL. So it's going to be our, our um, website URL API blog create and I'm going to go to change this to a post request and since it's a post request I now can add some body parameters so the the parameters that we need are the title I'll just say you know um, Mitch's title the next is going to be the body this is the body with a bunch of exclamation marks and uh, what else do we need? I think that actually might be it. We need title, body, oh, we need an image. So let's go and change this to image and change the text parameter here to file. I'm gonna go to choose a file. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna select any one here. Um, and that should be it because we're getting the, it'll get the author object from the view itself. So let's see if this works. I'm gonna click send and looks like we get an error. I think the error here is actually the slash. So if we go in here and I delete, I don't think you can add slashes when you're doing uh, puts, deletes, and posts. Only with get requests you can add the slash. I'm pretty sure that's what's wrong. So I'm removing all the slashes, going to back to oh, going back to Postman, and no slash there. Let's click send, and okay, there we go. So we got it. We got an error. It said um, has no attribute HTTP 201 create. So it looks like I just added the wrong constant. So let's go back to views. It says does not have anything that's HTTP. Oh, yeah, HTTP 201 create. And that's because it should be created. So I'm changing that to HTTP 201 created, pressing control S to save that. Going back to Postman, clicking send. 
looks like unique constraint failed. So uh, what happened there was it actually did create the blog post when I sent the last request, but it didn't return a response because of the failure. So it's saying that uh, the, the slug needs to be unique. So I'll say Mitch's, well, I'll just show you what happened. So if we go back to the server and I refresh this, notice that that did actually post. There's Mitch's title and my body. So there's the blog post. Now let's go here and I'll change this to Mitch's second title and that will get rid of the unique constraint because the, the slugs have to be unique. So if I click send, there we go. It's created a blog post. There's our title, the body, the image, and the date that it was updated or in other words, the date that it was published. So that's uh, that's it. Now let's test the other let's test the other requests. So I'll change this now to um, well let's go into our blog post and then refresh that and just take a look here. There's the second one. So let's go to, and say we wanted to update this one. So what I need to do is I need to copy the slug, go into go into here. I need to paste the slug in here and do um, well first we'll look at the details. So I'll send this request. That should give me the detailed post. So it changes to get, click send. There we go. Looks like it gets the data correctly. So just doing a get request, that's going to be the blog detail view, this one right here. Now suppose we wanted to update that blog. So we're going to go to the update view. All I need to do is change this to, I believe it was update was the keyword right there. You could also use edit. Edit is pretty common, but we're going to use update. Uh, so let's click. Oh, this is actually going to be a put request. Now I want to change. I want to add the parameters for changing this. So I'll say instead of Mitch's second title, I'll say some other title in capitals, and the body will just be I don't know a bunch of question marks, and then the image will be this third image here. So uh, let's take a look at it. Make sure that every just to kind of confirm what this looks like. Now we're going to send the request. Looks like update was successful. Now let's go and refresh this. And there we go. We have a different image, a different title, and a bunch of question marks. So our, our update view is working correctly. Now let's go into views and try the delete view. So everything's going to be exactly the same here, except I'm going to change this to slash delete, change this to delete. Uh, there should be no body, I believe, for a delete request. I'm just going to get rid of all those click send and it says delete was successful. So now when I refresh this page, we expect to see a 404 not found. And that's what we see because that blog post was deleted. So everything is working exactly as we expect. We have our four views, the get, the put, the delete, and the post. So as I talked about earlier in this video with the creating a blog post view, we need to work on authentication next. And uh, we're going to be using token authentication. So in the next video, I'm going to start working on the REST APIs for user registration, logging in users. And then once that's done, I'm going to work on implementing token authentication.